Hey guys, this is JB. I want to show you a quick look around around my new studio, which I got for two weeks now. Um, I moved into a new flat, um, got out of my dad's home, so I'm no more in the, in the basement room where all my, all my stuff was standing. Um, you saw this maybe on the older live performance videos and the, the new live performance video, which I uploaded like half an hour ago. Um, it's the first one that's shot here in this new room and I want to uh, show you the way I'm working when I'm actually producing, not not all the live performance stuff, that's a whole, whole different topic. Um, yeah, have a look around, I've got um, all my synths here and some, some new stuff, some new interfaces and well, let's have a look around. Well, what you can see here is my old master keyboard, the CME UF7 and um, my the big the biggest keyboards I have the Yamaha Yamaha S80. Since the CME, okay, let's let's start with the CME. I've got this in I don't know 2005 as a master keyboard. Um, doesn't do anything right now because it's not connected to a synth. Um, actually, a, a pretty good keyboard. Uh, the keyboard itself is good. The controllers are fine. Just, um, well, the aftertouch is no more working in the highest C key. Also has, uh, all, all only works when it wants to work. And the USB support is actually not available. Or no more available for new computers, which kind of sucks. But it's okay since I have, uh, it still has a normal MIDI out, so I have connected this to my MIDI interface. And still works this way. So this is the S80. Got this in 2000. The only uh, keyboard I have with a heavy weighted keys, 88, that was uh, the Dolphin patch, the first patch of my sound bank. Um, this is great for everything, um, acoustic sounds and this, the synth section, uh, if you're looking for virtual analog sounds, it's not the best. They're, they're for my better synths, but you can do very complex pad sounds on this thing and everything that um, has natural instruments in it. Like, you can even do some, some ambient piano stuff and something. This is amazing. But um, I've also got in this thing an extension card, the PLG150AN, which is uh, Yamaha's virtual analog section. And I got this last year, yeah, and this is just amazing. This makes makes the, the whole synth, oh, this adds, adds another synth to, the, to this engine. And you can simply, um, um, choose choose patches from this card like any other and and it's just well playable. So let's move around to the other side. What do we have here? The Yamaha AN1X. Not much to say about this one. This is just I I bought this. I don't know when 2007. It was already 10 years old that back then. And it was actually love at first sight or love at first play, however you may want to call it. A really amazing virtual analog sound. Um, actually, I think the well, the, the the idol of this of this gear was the Prophet Five by Sequential Circuits, and the the filter is just amazing. Back in the day, I had also the Roland GP8080, and when I, I, I I was hoping that the JP the the Roland had all almost the same uh, filter sounds like like the like the ANAs, but there's no compare. Uh, everything that's plucky is just amazing uh, on the AN1X. Let's see if I've got something here right now, something plucky, yeah, stuff like that. And also, um, all all those the droning basses that you sometimes hear in my production are from the AN1. Uh, it has an unisono mode where uh, up to ten oscillators sound at the same time. This is the bass sound I used in the Until the Sun remix for our Andy's song with Replacer and Feather, and yeah, also some other sounds that come from here. 
The Quasimedi series, rare, rare thing, it's not actually a good synth, but it's very flexible. I love, I love to use uh, it for pad sounds and uh, also several drum sounds that I have, that I use. All, if you hear 909 crashes, it's always the serious or uh, uh, always hi-hats and this night, you can hear this also in almost every uh, production of mine, this, um, this reversed noise. Pretty much before every fourth a snare hit or clap hit. Also, actually, ironically coming from the kick channel. But, well, it works. And of course, the last thing here is the, the Korg X5D, also a uh, rom rompler synth, not for not good for um, virtual analog sounds, but um, it has some nice uh, multi-source, or actually it doesn't have multi-source. Uh, this is something I figured out um, while trying to get into this machine, that the CPU, the internal processor, is so slow that it cannot start all oscillators, especially in combination patches, at the same time, so you always have uh, some kind of free running, and if you stack a few source uh, over another, you can get... Just amazing uh, super saw sounds like this. And this little machine here, this was actually the drummer and bassist for um, my band, um, the Yamaha QY100 micro sequencer. Also, every time you hear any drum stuff, this this is from this machine. Also, if I if I need some strings quickly, or some you don't don't know chromatic percussion, this is usually the Q1, QY100. All those synths. Oh no, the, the Wii synth. I almost forgot the Wii synth. This, because this has no keyboard here. Um, this is like I made a dream come true to me. I always dreamed. Uh, the, on the very first time I played the synth, I thought to myself, I have to get this one day. And I made this dream come true five years ago, and I don't regret it. The internal CPU power. Uh, isn't strong enough to serve all the functions that this thing has, especially if you've got a very complex, e.g. virtual analog sound here from the virtual analog section. You can see that it's not able to process all the notes in time, but the sound quality is amazing clean. Also, if you work with samples, you can do so many things um, with, a, with a very phrase technology like I don't know, um, sync to tempo and stuff, drum loops. I've got a few rhythmic pad sounds that are based on drum loops that sync to the tempo, which sound amazing. You can hear this in some of my productions. Okay, all these sounds, you've got big mess of cables down here. This is me, this is audio, everything leads up to here and into the mixer. This line was added by my girlfriend. We don't need this one. Um, this is not really a mixer, or well, this is actually a mixer, but I don't use it as a mixer. I use it more as a router. Since I have several uh, audio inputs in my interface, um, I can say, e.g., um, that I want one special synth, e.g., the, the Yamaha S80, to a separate channel so I can sidechain it more heavily. I just say, route this to group one, two, and I've got it on another channel in the audio interface. Yeah, stuff like that. That's really just pressing buttons. Um, here, that's my new audio interface, the Moto Ultralight Mark III. You can see this, this little view meter, which is right now recording my voice. Um, yeah, I've Got this. This is new for us, and it gives it's, it has gives me so many possibilities since I um, since I can use several audio inputs for my synths, so I can use them more flexible. The V synth um, actually is directly connected to the interface via uh, a digital coaxial connection, so it doesn't go via the router. It always has its own channel, but for the for the rest, I can uh, use two stereo inputs. I wanted actually to use three, but um, the aux ways, the send ways of the, the mixer is for some reason mono. Um, but um, maybe I'll figure, that out, figure this out one day. 
Um, easy M8U, media interface, 8 in, 8 out, nothing special here, works like a charm. There's not so much. And, of course, there's the computer. Standard MacBook from 2000, end of 2011, running Logic. Well, I've got uh, my template here where I have all my all my synths already inside. The S80, the X5D, and so on. All the seven channels of the Sirius and a few channels of the Yamaha QY100. And they all get into the input here, so I can say play the S80 is right now on the, f on the first input. But if I say I need this on a special channel, I switch those buttons here, like I said before, and I have it on the next channel and I can add effects to it, which is quite amazing, um, especially if you're working with hardware. It's no problem if you're coming from software mode, you have every synth on its own channel and can add effects to it. But if you're working like me with uh, some hardware synths, this is always an improvement of, work, uh, work, of working conditions. Well. That is pretty much it. My um, monitors are right now the RFT BR25, uh, good old GDR box uh, monitor speakers. Um, these, these are passive speakers connected to a Denon EVR700RD amp. Well, that's basically everything I have in my studio right here. And well, only thing I can say now is bye-bye, hope you enjoyed this.